Hey guys, I've got here a KHS mountain bike. This is one of their e-bike models. And like a lot of modern mountain bikes, it's got hydraulic brakes. Now this is something that's a little bit new for me, so I thought it might be new for you guys too. If you're working with a mountain bike that has hydraulic brakes like this one, you're going to have to bleed those brakes at some point. Now the procedure in general works just like in a car or on a motorcycle, but there's a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you today that'll help you get through the process faster and cleaner and get the job done right. Let's dive in. In this case, the problem that we're having is the rear brake has gotten really spongy. Now there are two causes for this. The first is that the rear brake pads are fairly far worn down. They're not quite gone, but we're gonna go ahead and change them today as part of this process. The second is that I'm pretty sure there's air in the system because as you collapse the lever all the way to the bar, the pads actually contact the disc, but you still got a spongy feel in the lever here. For this job, you'll need three basic things. You'll need a bleed kit, which I'll go through in a minute. You'll need a new set of brake pads, and you'll need Allen keys to take all the parts off and put them back on. It's also helpful to have this little gadget, which is a tool to help you center the brake caliper on the disc as you're putting everything back together. This bleed kit, which is available on Amazon, links in the description, consists of a syringe, a funnel, and a brake bite block. For Shimano systems on mountain bikes, you're going to want to use the Shimano specific mineral oil. Some other bikes use, I believe, DOT 4.1 brake fluid. You don't want to mix them up as you can do damage to the seals if you go in either direction. The first step is to remove this fill level pin and to install this bleed funnel. Be careful when you're putting the funnel in as the plastic threads on it are fairly delicate and it's easy to cross thread them. When you remove the fill screw, make sure you catch the rubber o-ring so you don't lose that. Once you get the funnel attached, you'll then move down to the rear wheel in our case. After you have the funnel installed up on the master cylinder, the second step is to remove the caliper from the disc, spread the pads gently apart, remove the pads, make sure that the caliper pistons are all the way seated, and then install a brake block that will help during the bleeding process. Remove the bolts that hold the caliper to the bike. Remove the cotter pin from the brake discs. And the disc pair will drop out nicely. Pay attention to how this spring is set, holding those off the disc. And you can see here that these pads aren't nearly as bad as actually I thought they were. You'll insert the brake block where the pads were, and that will force the caliper pistons apart into their home position. With the brake block in, we'll remove this rubber cap from the bleed valve and attach the syringe and the hose. Before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to fill the syringe about halfway with the mineral oil that's gonna be going into here and make sure that we get the line on the syringe completely free of air. And while you're attaching this hose to the bleeder nipple, you'll squeeze just a tiny bit of fluid out so that you don't introduce air into the bottom end of this system. Next, we'll have to open this bleed valve. And then we're gonna squeeze fluid all the way through the line back up into the reservoir that we attached at the top, pushing any air and dirty fluid out with it. You can see the fluid filling into the reservoir as we press it in from the bottom side. Once you see clean fluid coming out at the top, you can go ahead and close this nut to seal off the system. And then we're going to go up to the brake lever and we're going to pull the brake lever and see if the feel has improved. The caliper pistons will be pushing against this brake block so they shouldn't come out and leak fluid all over or anything like that. Here you can see about how much of the fluid we pushed through. These lines are real thin, so it doesn't take much fluid to reach from the back all the way up here to the lever. Now let's pump the lever a bit. So I don't feel any sponge. Actually, the lever's not moving at all because the brake pistons in the caliper are actually locked against that brake block. We'll now insert this plunger into the funnel to make sure we seal off the funnel so that we can remove it without spilling fluid all over. 
We'll then insert a couple of drops into the master cylinder to make sure it's completely full and recap that. We'll then move and put the back end back together and test the brakes. In our case, we got really lucky. There was just a tiny bit of fluid left underneath the funnel and that's filled up the hole really nicely. So we're gonna carefully put the screw back in and seal this up. We're gonna remove the syringe from the bleed nipple. And this is clean fluid that we can put back in the bottle. We'll make sure the bleed valve is tight. And I'm going to use just a little bit of brake clean on here to make sure that I don't get any of the brake fluid onto the braking surfaces. Remove the brake block. Replace the nipple cover. Replace the brake pads, making sure that the spring is properly in place. Be careful not to touch the braking surfaces with your fingers. You probably have brake fluid on them still. Replace the cotter pin. and replace the caliper back on to the bicycle. Replacing the screws. Now these have just a little bit of Loctite on them, so we're gonna put some fresh Loctite on. Now you tighten them down just enough so that you still have a little bit of play here. And then you're going to use this disc centering tool and it's going to slide up into the caliper between the pads and it's going to sit right up there and that's going to help you get a little bit of space on either side of the pads. Another thing you want to do before you tighten these down is go ahead and squeeze the brake lever a few times. That'll make sure that those pistons get naturally centered and that this entire unit can float while that happens. You'll then remove the centering tool. You don't want that to get left in there and spin the wheel and see if you've got any friction points between the disc and the pads. And that's it for this process. Thanks a ton for watching guys. I recommend you take the bike out and test the brakes before you get out in a situation where you actually need them to perform. More than likely they'll be ready to go for you, but it never hurts to double check with something like brakes. Don't forget to check out our line of Enduro helmet chin mounts. They're custom made for every motorcycle helmet that we have in our lineup. We're always expanding the product. Tons of details about that, links in the description. There's also links to all the products and tools that we used on this job so that you can find your own. You guys clicking our links to buy the stuff that you need for these jobs really helps us to keep going and um, keep making these videos. And we really appreciate that support. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.